Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from sound for more It's Leo speaking. And um, today we're going to go through how to use the buffer effects inside Drumble. Before I start, please do subscribe if you haven't done so, as that will help to grow the channel, bring more videos, tutorials and give away. So <clears throat> let's start. So I'm inside Drumble, standalone version. So I click on the plus sign generator and let's um, select uh, the Flexi Sampler and let's load the gadget Harmonic, one of my previous composition done in gadget. Okay, we loaded that up. So if I press on the pad, it will start. So if you click uh, twice on the play sign, you can get it to stop. Now for simplicity, I'm going to load also a mixer. Why not? So that I can actually free feed the output from the flexi sampler inside the mixer and I can therefore play with the volume here on the mixer itself. Okay, so let's click on the plus sign and then let's go under processor. Let's scroll down where it says effect buffer oscillator, repeat, rescan and stop. And those are the ones which we are going to explain. So let's start with the buffer oscillator. As you can see, it has only one dial, the pitch dial, and then it has the connectivity already established with the mixer for audio. And then he has a gate here connectivity. So you need to have that gate to be triggered for the buffer to record and therefore keep playing what is being recorded. The length of what is being recorded in the buffer will be established by this pitch. So the lower it is, the uh, the smaller it is, the bigger it will be. So the smaller pitch, the bigger it will be. So let's add the four A under um, utility. Let's scroll right down to the bottom and let's choose a trigger button. Let's connect that. Uh, okay, it's already connected. Now I'm going to click uh, play and I'm going to trigger the, for the button here to allow for the buffer to work. So you don't hear anything at the moment. Let's click on trigger. So as you can see, I'm clicking several times on the trigger button and that will allow to trigger recording again. Let's change now the pitch to, to show you how it works. Okay, now I have removed that buffer oscillator. Of course, I could have used also a modulator like a mini LFO to create multiple triggers directly in that gate input. That's something that perhaps you want to explore. Um, <clears throat> now, let's go back to our processor list and let's choose uh, the next one, which will be buffer repeat. So here you have the ability to set the buffer size the buffer play speed and then the dry and wet effect so you can mix the original uh, audio with the um the new um audio um as per buffer settings in terms of what is being recorded so the classical dry and wet uh, effect you need to click freeze in order for to hear what is being recorded based on the size selected up here you have a strict option in terms of quantizing the change in speed and then you have also a poly uh, function which but for this purpose it should be really off because it's used normally to combine effects when you have multiple notes so we'll, we'll leave that uh, as uh, as off. Of course, you can use um, um, a gate as well for the freeze uh, um, to be on or off. So um, let's try. Let's click play. And let's click on freeze. Oops. Freeze. Change the size. Of course, you can change the speed. Of 
And of course, you can use the dry, wet effect to mix the two audio signals. Okay, st very straightforward. Now let's go to the next one, which is called buffery scan. So this is very similar to the previous one, but you don't have a freeze button. So it constantly does that without act having to act on the freeze uh, um, function. So let's try. Because it, the signal gets resynchronized, you can see the latency there as uh, the loop restart based on what has been scanned next inside the buffer, right? Okay, so to hear that, you really have to pay attention when the loop restarts, of course. But you can take that output of signal and therefore send it uh, for further processing, which is the beauty of having that buffer effect uh, to work in that way. Finally, we also have a buffer stop, which is one of my favorite here. You have times in milliseconds uh, that it will take to stop the audio signal or to restart. You have a dry, wet effect. You have your poly function, which will leave that as default, and then you can have a, a run button to enable or disable. So let's try. Stop. Restart. Stop. Let's increase the start time. Let's increase the stop time. And this is one of my favorite uh, effects in terms of all the other buffer effects. So it's quite nice uh, to apply stop and start directly on uh, your audio incoming signal. So I hope you found, you found the, the uh, video and tutorial useful. And as always, see you next time. Thank you. Bye.